Okay, so in this lesson this week, we're going to talk about systems of linear congruences, which means more than one linear congruence at once. We want to find a linear congruence that solves both of them. So in this question, it says find two a congruence that solves both of these congruences. Well, the method for doing this is to use an algebraic approach and to rewrite this saying, well, that means that it has to be written as 2 plus 5 times some integer. Right? N's got to be 2 times 5 plus some integer. Same thing over here. N has to be 3 times plus 6 times some integer. Well, it's got to be different than A. It, well, it probably is different than A, so it's probably gonna, we're just going to make it B. So this is good because it allows us to write an equation. 2 plus 5A equals 3 plus 6B. Now, the problem with this is um, we don't really know what to do with it because we have... Uh, two variables, and we don't have another equation to solve with. However, we are looking for a linear congruence, so all we need to do is mod out by the uh, smallest of the coefficients of the variable. So I'm going to do mod 5. So this side is just equal to 2 mod 5, right? 5a, everything's going to be a multiple of 5 when you multiply a by 5, and so it's always going to be 2 mod 5. So we just let it equal 2 which is going to be equivalent to, well, 3, 6 is 1 mod 5, and so it's just going to be b mod 5. Now, we need to simplify this a little bit, and so what we're going to, what we're going to look at is we're going to subtract the 1, the 3, and so we get b equals negative 1 mod 5. Well, negative 1 mod 5 is just the same as 4 mod 5. So we can think about the solution as being 4 mod 5. Now what I need to do is I need to recognize that that means my b is equal to 4 times plus 5 times some c. And if I plug that in here I get n has to be equal to 3 plus 6 times 4 plus some c, 5c, 4 plus 5c. And so that's going to give you 27 plus 30c. Well, the congruence that's equal to that is just n is equivalent to 27 mod whatever the coefficient is, which is 30. So 27 mod 30 is the solution to this problem. You can see that, for instance, just looking at 27, 27 is equivalent to 2 mod 5, and it is equivalent to 3 mod 6. Okay, so 27 mod 30 works for both of these. All right, so another example of this. Solve n is equivalent to 4 mod 7 and 2 mod 9. Well, that's going to give you, just do the same thing I just did. So 4 plus 7a uh, equals 2 plus 9b. You do take the mod of 7 because that's the lower coefficient of both sides. And so that's going to give you 4 is equivalent to, well, mod 7, that's going to give you 2 plus 2b mod 7. And so that means you're going to get 2b equals 2 mod 7. Now you need to remember how to solve this equation, or this um, congruence. We need this to be 1 mod 7. Well, to do that, we need to multiply both sides by 4. And so that's going to end up with b equals 8 mod 7, which it means b equals 1 mod 7, which means b is equivalent to 1 plus 7c. Once you get that, you plug it back into this, and so you get n is equivalent to 2 plus 9 times 1 plus 7c. So that's going to give you 11 plus 63c. So my answer is going to be 11 mod 63. 11 mod 63. Now if you notice, that was pretty easy to see. Obviously 11 is 2 mod 9 and 4 mod 7. What might be harder is if I said, well, find a um, four-digit number that solves this congruence. And then you can now, using 11 mod 3, you just find multiply 63 by a number that gets you a four-digit number, and then add 11. Okay, a couple more examples. Solve n equals 2 mod 9, and 6 equals uh, n equals 6 mod 12. So what, you know, we're trying to find two different congruences for this, so you're going to get 2 plus 9a equals 6 plus 12b. Now when I do this, if I multiply by, through by 9, or if, I, if I mod out by 9, that means I'm going to get 2 is equivalent to 6 plus 
3b mod 9. And so that's going to get that's going to be equivalent to 2 or it's going to be equivalent to having um, if I um, subtract the 6 I get negative 4 negative 4 mod 9 is the same as 5 um, mod 9 is equivalent to 3b well the problem is there's no way to multiply something by 3 to get something that is equivalent to 1 mod 9 and that's because this is always a multiple of 3 5 more than a multiple of 9 is not going to be a multiple of 3 so there is no solution so this is a problem that is no solution and that is because this was a 6 was a multiple of 3 whereas 2 was not all right here are our problems that we use this modular arithmetic for and really make our answer problems a lot easier find the largest three digit whole number that leaves a remainder of 5 when divided by 8 and a remainder of 4 when divided by 9 well you can do that by saying okay I need to be I need 5 mod 8 and I need 4 mod 9 and both of those need to equal the same number so I do what I've been doing which would give you 8a plus 5 equals 9b plus 4 take both sides mod 8 and I'm going to get 5 is equivalent to um, b plus 4 mod 8 which once I subtract 1 I get b is equivalent to 1 mod 8 so that means b is equivalent to um, 1 plus 8c plug that back in for b and I end up with 72c plus 9 plus 4 which gives you 13 plus 72c which means that it's equivalent to 13 mod 72 but we need the largest three digit whole number so I need to multiply 72 by something that gives me a large three digit whole number so I'm thinking 12 sounds pretty good 72 by 12 gives me 864 well plus 11 is 875 that works for my problem but it's not the largest one because I could add 72 to that and I could end up with 947. So the answer to this question is 947 because 947 is equivalent to 13 mod 72. And our last example, how many three digit positive integers leave a remainder of 2 when divided by 5 and a remainder of 6 when divided by 7? Same thing, you're just it's just a system of linear congruence. 2 mod 5, 6 mod 7. And so you're going to get 5a plus 2 equals 7b plus 6. Go through mod 5 and you're going to get 2 is equivalent to 2b plus 1 mod 5. Which is going to give you 1 equals 2b. So we're going to end up with 2b is equivalent to 1 mod 5. Well, I need to get 1b, so I need to multiply both sides by 3 so I can get 6b, which is equal to 1b mod 5. And so multiply by 3 gives me b is equivalent to 3 mod 5. Plug that back in up here. 7 times, remember, because this is going to be 3 plus 5c. So 3 plus 5c plus 6 equals 27 plus 35c. It says how many 3-digit positive integers leave a remainder of 2 when divided by 5 and a remainder of 6 when divided by 7? Well, the first one's going to happen when c equals, well, if c equals 2, that gives me 97. So C if it equals 3 is going to give me 132. So that's the first one. And then each one of those go up 35 after that. And so I need to find out what the biggest one is. I think about 25 times 35 looks pretty good. That gives me 875. So actually I needed to multiply by about 27. 27 times 35 equals 945. Add 27. So your tallest one is 972. So you're going up to 972. You're separated by 30 each time because it's mod 30. How many are there? Well, you should know how to do this. Subtract the two and you get um, 972 um, minus 132, which gives you 840, 840, right? Divided by the difference, which is 30. 840 divided by 30 is equivalent to 28. Add one to that and you get 29. So that means there are 29 numbers. That's a very good, solid way to solve that problem.